प्रणाम सदगुरु सिंस यू आर एक्सप्लोरिंग द कल्चर ऑफ नेटिव अमेरिकन एंड वी नो हाउ डीपली यू एक्सप्लोर एनीथिंग यू डू आई एम इनक्विजिटिव टू आस्क वन क्वेश्चन अबाउट द साउंड आई हैव हर्ड आई हैव हर्ड दैट देर इज अ लॉट ऑफ सिग्निफिकेंस ऑफ साउंड इन इन द लाइव ऑफ नेटिव अमेरिकन and they have chants for different purposes for rains for harvesting what is the difference between the chants we have here in our culture um in sanskrit and uh, can we understand uh, the chants of uh, native americans uh, the way we understand uh, the chants we have in our culture um through uh, you know nad brahm or anhat nad or shabd brahm you know we have heard about these things and uh, can you please throw some light on um, what is the difference uh, between various chants which we hear you know around the world and uh, also can the chants be translated in different languages or is there any language out there so um please throw some light it would be great namaskaram uh, prasoon <laughs> uh well your question has to be complicated like this and i'm glad you asked this question because uh, i have been pondering over this have been listening to lot of uh, native american chants i've met so many people and they sang for us and also i've been exploring the terrain and you know my fascination with the terrain i think i've spoken to you i cross crossed india not going towards any particular destination just enjoying the land the terrain and it's great that once again i have this opportunity that i am riding across united states in the most fantastic terrain uh i can imagine how a native american man or woman would have experienced terrain in those days when there were no vehicles and it's such a vast land if you looked out 100 miles you you know it's just plains in the further plains indians and mountains in elsewhere uh, in other places well what i notice with the chants is that they found a way i'm saying this uh, very consciously with a a certain sense of uh, a profound listening to what has been uttered well there are songs in this culture as there are songs in every culture that's a different matter but the warble that they're doing with their throat in a way is the geometry of the land the symphony of the geometric symphony of the land has found expression in the sound form or in a way they connecting with the land through the sound whenever a sound and a form gets connected that is what we called as mantra in the indian culture in our culture when a sound connects with the form we call that as mantra so their language and their way of looking at this they did not look at it mathematically as to how we have done in india a complex mathematics is there for the science of mantras which is called as uh, nada yoga there is a whole math attached to it here they did not look at it that way they looked at the land looked at the land looked at the land looking at the land they uttered sounds which match with the geometry of the land this geometric symphony between land and sound is largely the basis of what you see as native american chants i don't know if you can call it chants it is just an outpouring an outpouring of sound not necessarily words just sounds in a way 
touching the land, flowing as the land undulates, the sound undulates. It's very beautiful if... Uh, if you see where a certain kind of chant or a, uh, this wobble was created and in what kind of land they existed, you can clearly see that the sound is just skimming along the land, touching the various geometric proportions of the land. This is a, a very amazing and beautiful way of what human attention can do. Modern societies are uh, too terribly lost in their own thought and emotion that their attention levels have go gone down immensely. As I've said many times, I repeat this, the greatest loss that's happened to human beings is this. Human beings have lost their ability to pay attention, a keen and intense sense of attention to anything. They think their thought, their information that they collected from textbooks and books and internet, whatever is more important than attention. But the Native American traditions come from attention. I want you to just imagine, suppose you sat on a land that if you look out for hundreds of miles, there's really nothing, just a plain. If a man or a woman simply sits there and gazes at the land, there will be no thought, just attention. Initially, this attention may be survival related, but gradually attention becomes your way. So, the sounds that you're utter uttering is the consequence of the intense and purposeless attention that they're paying to the land around them. It is very important there is no purpose to it because the moment you put a purpose to it, you become a vested interest. You are not one with nature. You have your own intention and agenda as to why you should pay attention. Simply attention. In this attention, they created a geometric symphony with the land in which they exist, which is very, very beautiful. I think only if you listen to those sounds, in the land in which they say is made these sounds, one realizes how beautifully it is melding with the land. This... this melting with the land in... through the sound has opened up many secrets for them. Because attention... attention is the only way to open up doors in the universe. There is nothing in the universe that cannot open up to human attention, if human attention is keen enough and sustained for a substantial amount of time. If this is done, all secrets can be opened up. They open up the secrets of this earth, they open up the secrets of the spirits, they open up the secrets of other dimensions of life, simply with keen attention, without a purpose. I think this is a natural consequence of living in open terrain where there are not too many human beings, there is nothing else happening except you and the atmosphere around you, and inevitably, you initially you start paying attention for survival reasons, later on attention becomes your way of being. I think this whole use of sound has... in these cultures, the whole use of sound in these cultures has evolved out of this purposeless attention, not about reaching God, not about achieving something, simply attention. Where there is attention, one shall not be denied. If attention is keen enough, creation and the creator has to yield. This is what you see here in this very gentle and beautiful culture, of which not much is left, but still what is left has to reach the world. People should understand how beautifully these people lived, being one with the land. When I say one with the land, they did not live upon the land, they are the land. Namaskaram Prasam.